This story is crazy. Our next guest was born into a normal childhood with a happy family until she later found out that her mother made a visit to the most renowned fertility doctor in the Indianapolis area, Dr. Donald Klein, who turned out to be lying to patients about using his own sperm to get them pregnant. Take a look at the dark story that unfolds. Anyone you talk to in the 70s, 80s, 90s, it was Dr. Donald Klein. Dr. Klein told them that they could use a sperm donor and it would be a medical resident and would be used no more than three times. So with that, I would maybe have the possibility of having, you know, one or two siblings. But I kind of felt like at that moment, I had a hole in my heart. Um, I want to know my paternal family. It was 1990. Commercial DNA testing was not available during that time. Someone that I shared a biological connection to, I may never know. And that was awful, especially when you would go to school and, you know, there was a couple girls that I went to school with and everybody would say like, you guys look so much alike. I would think, I wonder if they're my sister. You know, I would go to the doctor and think, is this my dad? I had went on a site, I found another lady and all it had on there was that, you know, her parents had went to Dr. Klein as well. My exact words, I turned around and looked at my husband and said, holy f I think this is my sister. We looked so much alike. I reached out to her and she said, there's another lady who has a sister and their parents also went to Klein. So we, you know, decided that we would take DNA tests. And when our results came back, there were eight of us. Every one of our parents had been told a donor no more than three times and a medical resident. Well, at that time there was like a span, I think of seven year difference. A residency is three to four years. So if there's a seven year stretch between us and there's eight of us, then how many more siblings do we have? Mm. Wow, I am speechless. Please welcome to DBL, Jacoby Ballard. Thank yes. You, Jacoby. yes. And Jacoby, first and foremost, thank you for being so brave and honest and joining us to tell us your story. Yes. We yeah. appreciate it. Yes, you. and I want to talk about that bravery thank because you. you set up a meeting with Dr. Klein and he reluctantly agreed. So I need to know, how did he act towards you? Oh, so when we met with um, Klein, he was very cold. Mm. Um, matter of fact, um, it was almost like clinical, but he, and he wanted to just, I feel like, get some answers, get some information about us and be done with it. Oh. Let me ask you this. First of all, I, I'm, I feel like this is it's such a violation. It almost feels like a sexual assault. I know that's just my speculation mm -hmm. on the moms. That's how it feels to me. I don't know if you share that response. Yes. Okay, and I also wanted to ask you, what was his response to being accused of using his own sperm or specimen to impregnate innocent women like your mom? Was he stone-faced again? Um, well, in the beginning, he denied it. Right. He didn't even, the, that's how, he wasn't charged with anything to do with what he did to any of our mothers, fathers. Um, he was only charged with lying, and it was, he thought that he could get away with it and lie. So, um, but honestly, the whole entire time, there was never any remorse, almost like he never felt like he was doing anything wrong. He's like a God complex, <laughs> isn't it? Yes, God. definitely. So I a psychopath. So yes. many I have so this. many questions. He looked questions. annoyed in court, Jeff. He looked annoyed, like, why am I even here? Wow. It's, I'm sorry. Because he probably convinced himself it's like a gift. Mm -hmm. He is a god. Like, he thinks he's a god. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. What, what, whatever happened to Dr. Klein? And why, in your mind, do you think he even did this? Um, what happened to him was um, he had two felony counts for obstruction of justice, which was the lying. Um, and he's living his best life here in Indiana still, That's I assume. Um, he's and I feel like he did this. Um, I think it was a power yeah. thing. I, I think it was. That's just my own personal opinion. But I think that he honestly got off on the fact of, you know, nobody knew what he was doing and it was powerful to him. And just to be clear, uh -huh. he's free. He's not in yes. prison. Mm -mm. No. Disgusting. No. Yeah, he never served any time. Wow.
<laughs> I, I I also watched the documentary, and I I mean, first of all, thank you for mm -hmm. being so transparent with your story because we now know that your sibling group is not the only sibling group that this has happened to. That there have been other fertility mm -hmm. doctors who have done the same thing. But how does it feel to see a new sibling match, knowing you have to reach out and break the news? And what have you become more accustomed or like more comfortable with doing since you've had to do this so many times? Um, honestly, there's been some tension in my sibling group. Um, so I've kind of backed away. Um, I still will answer questions. I will still reach out if there's a new sibling. Um, but I don't know, I guess kind of making that documentary was kind of freeing for me mm. because mm -hmm. I felt like I carried all the weight and like I was the one that was supposed to do everything. And um, like I said, it was just freeing. And so I've kind of started focusing more <clears throat> on laws. And like you said, the other people from other doctors, we've kind of joined forces, <coughs> excuse me. Jacoba, you are a force. I can't imagine what you've been through. How many siblings are you up to now? So we are in the 90s. I wanna say we are at 94. Oh so it was God. wrong in the document. It was, I believe we were 87 when it came out. And I believe now we are at 94. And what are you, uh, I, again, I can't even like formulate a thought. What are you doing now to prevent something like this from happening again? So I work um, with um, Jody Madeira that was in the documentary as well. And as well um, as another lady who is public, her name's Eve Wiley um, from Texas. And we've gotten, um, laws passed, there's 11 states with fertility fraud laws, and we are also working on a federal law. We just went to DC a few months ago. So, and um, like we're, you know, speaking engagements on, you know, making people aware and how to ethically, you know, do donor conception. Good for, Good for you. you. Yeah, Good I know. For you. Jacoba, I have to ask this question as we, you know, you talk about your number of siblings. What what have been the range of responses that you've gotten from them once you've reached out in terms of positive, negative, and everything in between? Um, <clears throat> so there have been some that it, um, they say it didn't bother them. That, that's been a few, but for the most part, many of them, um, it's, just horrible. Mm. They kind of, you know, um, it's like you have to be prepared to recommend therapists and, mm. you know, different um, groups for them to be involved in and stuff like that. It's a, uh, it's horrible. I mean, because most of them, and like, I would say a fourth of my siblings were supposed to be from their dads and mm. Klein oh. took their dads from and threw it away. So, um, that's been a whole nother, you know, dynamic as well. Wow. And it's been awful for the families. Awful. Jacoba, thank you so much for coming on here today, for sharing your story. It will certainly save lives. Thank you for your advocacy. Thank you. DBL Nation. Yeah. Thank you. And DBL Nation, please follow Jacoba Ballard across social media for updates and action to end fertility fraud. That's the goal. We'll be right back. Thank you. Thank you. Fighter. Thanks.